Hey everybody. So I haven't fired up this old heater in uh, about six months. I converted it to run on two Ryobi batteries and I have it wired in such a way that you can switch one off. It'll keep running on the other one so you can swap batteries out one at a time. Therefore, it'll just run endlessly. You can just keep topping up with fuel, swapping the batteries out and it'll keep going. Um, I'll post a link to some of the videos I've done on this. I picked up, let's go lower here, a, a carbon monoxide detector today at Home Depot. It's the KID all-purpose carbon monoxide alarm, plug-in with battery backup, part number 900235. I must make note, this is the second one. The first one I pick, picked up and brought home did not work. This one works fine. I had no problem exchanging it. Home Depot's good about that. Anyway, my goal is to see, I see so many people online talking about make sure this is all plumb tight, not gassing yourself wherever you're running this. I'm going to call BS on that. It run, mine runs on kerosene. I'm not speaking about people that run them on diesel. I'm talking about kerosene, although diesel will be similar. It's not like you're running an engine in your house. This is a much more efficient burning of the fuel. It doesn't, it's not as nasty to exhaust. I mean, obviously you don't want to run this in a shed and sit there breathing this for two hours. But people have been using kerosene heaters and kerosene lanterns in their house for hundreds of years. Well, a hundred years. Let's go with that. So I'm going to fire this up. It hasn't been fired up in at least six months. And I'm going to, I've got the carbon monoxide detector. I've got the battery backup put in, which I'm actually going to take the screw out in case this thing starts screaming so I can get the battery out to shut it off. Let's just pull that off. There we go. So it's got a little battery backup in the side. You see it's got the green light glowing. It means everything's go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up the heater. I'm going to set this about five feet away and we're going to see how long it takes it to set it off. Um, that's if, if the heater will even start up. Like I said, it's been sitting for about six months under my workbench here. Let's put the batteries in. There we go. We've got the batteries in. Let's power it up. There's two switches back here. Turn one on. It should light up the display. Okay, let's shut that off. Let's try the other one. Make sure they're both working. Okay, we both got power. They're both on. Turn on our little remote here. It's powered up, 12 volts, stop. Let's set this carbon monoxide detector, like I said, about five feet away. Uh, yeah, let's set it. That's just a test, sorry. We're gonna go even closer. Let's put it about four feet away. Okay, wait. Hold on. Just making sure. That, uh, we're already picking up carbon monoxide. I just pulled the car in, so this could be a problem. Let's wait till this clears itself. Come on. This takes a minute to to fire itself up like everything these days. It's got to boot up. Okay, we've got the green light. Let's set it over here. So just setting on a little bench. I will bring you guys over so you can see what I see. There's the heater. There's the detector right there. There's the exhaust stack. So Let's fire it up and take a look, see what happens. Again, we'll turn the power on. Fire it up. It's on H3, so that's like about mid setting. Takes a second. The fans are started. That's a good sign. Both batteries are fully charged. This thing needs a minimum of 12 volts to operate, uh, at least to fire up. Once it's operating, it'll run on, on 11 volts. Takes a second, the fan is blowing air, cool air. Um, in a few minutes, you'll hear the, the pump, the fuel pump ticking. It'll start going, tick, 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 tick. and it'll go. Whoo. There'll be a little flame display here. You guys can see. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's move you closer. Let's see if you guys can see that at all. There we go. So we're on H3. Should any second, should start ticking. 
it takes too long, I'll just edit this part out of the video and go straight to the straight to the burning. We've got about three quarters of a tank of kerosene here. I just keep this as a, a backup emergency heater in case the garage. Oh, there we go. You guys hear that? It's pumping fuel, a little fuel pump. You can see some. This is just steam. It's basically unburned kerosene being blown out. Once it fires up, that'll stop right away, you'll see. But I'm wondering if that's going to set off the carbon monoxide detector. So far, so good. Let's time it. Seven minutes after. So we're in a closed garage here. Uh, my garage is 22 by 26. No, 24 by 26, sorry. You can see that's a lot of, a lot of vapor, but it just disappears. It's not smoke. It's just steam. This thing should kick on any second here. Come on. It's because I shut it down hot last time. There's probably puddles of kerosene in the burner. So it does vent that first. Moisture, humidity, condensation builds up. This pipe gets hot and then when you shut it down, cools the condensate gets in it and then just runs back down so this should always be pointed down I've just got it pointed up for for testing purposes only come on you stupid thing fire up seven minutes into the video here and we've got no action also got no carbon monoxide detector going off though come on oh there See how that cleared right up? Uh, let's put the display on so we can see the uh, temperature. Yep, it's lit. She's pumping and blowing warm air now. It's getting warmer. We're 32 already. 34. I'm just going to... the heat I can feel the heat from blowing from about six feet away so we're burning let's see how long it takes to set off the carbon monoxide detector we're all coming up to three minutes so far with it running yeah that's hot that's hot this is the carbon monoxide detector it's still green solid green Let's see how long this takes to go. Move the phone out of the way of the heat. Yeah, we're good. What we can do is redirect the heat a little bit. Blow it up. Come back closer. cat in the house. 
So we're running full steam, putting out tons of heat here. We're at 88 degrees Celsius. That's hot. Carbon monoxide detector, we're still good. Bring you guys over here so you can see, make sure I'm not screwing with you so you can see the green light on. See the green light is lit up, that means everything's good. Just want to be all transparent with this. Let's move this over a bit so you guys can see. There, it's even closer. What are we at now? We're at five minutes. Uh, six minutes. No, four minutes. Sorry. I'm running for four. I'm going to let it run for ten minutes and I'm going to shut her down. I mean, I'm, I'm direct venting this into the garage. This is not going outside at all. I'll show you what I mean. I can shut off one of the batteries here. I'll shut one off right now. Still running. That's hot. Very warm. Carbon monoxide detector still good. Don't know what to say, guys. This isn't quite the action-packed video I assumed it would be. We're going to go another five minutes and that'll be ten minutes. So, I may let it run after. I'll stop the video and then we'll come back and see. I don't need to film 20 minutes of live heater running here for you guys to get the point. I'll time it and see how long it takes to set it off because I'm sure it will set it off at some point. I mean, I can smell the kerosene burning in the garage. But it's not a carbon monoxide smell. So we're still good on the carbon monoxide detector. Don't know. Don't know. Anyway, the instruction manual that comes with this uh, smoke detector is ridiculous. Let me show you guys this while we're waiting for things to happen. So it comes, you got this little square instruction manual, right? You're thinking, oh, that's not that big. Well, it unfolds here. It's kind of thick, so you're thinking, well, this must be like five languages, right? You'd be wrong. That's all English. All that for a carbon monoxide detector. My full confession is I did read it all. When the first detector I bought didn't work, I made sure and read it all to make sure it wasn't my fault. It was not my fault. Right out of the box, the first one didn't work. All right, another three minutes, and it's been 10 minutes running. And this is literally, let's get a tape measure and see. Carbon monoxide detector is literally from the tip of the exhaust to the intake of the carbon monoxide detector, it's 41 inches. 41 inches. It's just three and a half feet, roughly, close to it. So if this isn't setting off the carbon monoxide detector, I don't know. Glad to see it's working still, considering I haven't used it in six months. 
pumping out the heat. Batteries are good, haven't even lost the bar. They usually lose a bar when I fire it up, when it first starts it up. It takes more amperage to start it than it does to keep it running. Um, I put the amp clamp up to it when it's running and it only draws about, I think it's, what, what am I saying, eight amps? It needs 10 amps or 11 amps to fire up and it'll run on eight, seven to eight amps, it'll keep running. I have done tests when I hooked up to the battery trying different things. Okay, we're not getting anything here and we're at nine and a half minutes. It's another 30 seconds. I don't know guys. Once it gets to 10 minutes, I'll bring the carbon monoxide detector over to the exhaust and make sure it's working. Hold it up here. Bring it closer. Absolutely nothing. Crazy. Let's put it down low. We're right beside the exhaust on the heater now. All right, well, that's been 10 minutes, guys. I'm going to shut her down, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her over by my car exhaust and start the car and see how quick it goes off. All right? All right, let's shut this off. Yeah. Fan will keep blowing for a while. It does that to cool off the burner because the uh, the computer, the panel, the, the brains of the operation, I don't know why, they placed it on top of the burner. So if you just shut it down without the fan still going, it will melt your circuitry. So another reason you want to make sure you have a battery backup or something, because if you just plug this into 120 volt with a converter, your power goes out, you're going to fry your heater. You're best off hooking up to a battery and then putting a like a car battery or some sort of 12 volt battery and leaving it hooked to a trickle charger. So it's always charging, it'll always work. And if it dies, it just runs off the battery. So this is still pumping out. Let's move this thing over to the car and let's try this again. So hold on a second, folks. All right, folks, so I ran this thing for another 20 minutes. Didn't set off the detector. I moved the detector over. You guys can see, see those two lights over there. It's plugged into that thing on the wall over there. Started up the car, it ran for about three seconds before it set off the detector, so it works. It's just that this heater does not put out enough carbon monoxide to set it off. So I'd say that's, that's kind of busted. You know, by all means, I wouldn't go running this inside all day or anything, but as long as you've got the exhaust half-ass vented, you're gonna be okay. okay. Don't take my word for it. I'm not a scientist. Do whatever's best for you. I'm not giving advice here. All right. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.